All right, guys, if you guys are familiar with the DBK or the Dutch Bushcraft Knife channel, you guys probably saw one of the knives that they talked about, a crazy $10, super affordable bushcrafting knife, and this is it. I think they might have even said it was a survival knife too, but this is the Holtefers or Holtzfers, whatever you want to, however you want to pronounce it, um, heavy duty knife. Now, this knife immediately caught my attention because when they did the video of it, they were like, this thing is $10, it's super cheap, and it is actually pretty um, durable, pretty thick. And I will be comparing this to another super cheap, pretty thick, pretty durable knife, the Mora Robust. Now, if you guys can tell here, you can see that these guys are actually the same thickness. They're about, just about an eighth of an inch thick. So they're not like super, super thick. They're not, um, for reference, let me pull out something a little bit more like actually thick and beefy. This is a Bark River Knives Bravo One. This doesn't have a whole lot of context to this video in particular, but it just goes to show that this is a quarter inch thick blade. So you guys can see there the stock on this guy is, or this Bravo One's quarter inch. So that gives you some relativity to how thick an eighth of an inch thick knife is. Now, to be fair, um, a lot of us compare when we think about like super cheap knives, obviously the Bravo One's pretty expensive. Um, so when we typically think about cheap knives, we think of things like the Mora Clipper. So the Mora Clipper, and I'll actually do this, the Holtefers, um, heavy duty knife is an eighth of an inch thick. So you can see that in comparison to the about 10th of an inch thick um, Mora Clipper here it is noticeably thicker. Now, <clears throat> in my opinion, what does that actually have to do with durability? Not as much as you might think, um, honestly, with a lot of steel, it's really more how um, malleable and pliable is the knife as opposed to just it being a thick, you know, beefy chunk of steel. It does have some context to, um, you know, effectiveness and things like splitting, but realistically, this is a pretty durable knife, this Mora Clipper. However, like I said, for the price tag, of this knife, I was like, instantly, I have to at least check it out, right? And seeing that it came from or got the flying um, stars of approval from DBK or the boys at DBK, I was like, you know, it has to be worth it, right? Sub $20, might as well just check it out. Well, first off, I have to say, this knife was actually pretty hard to find. Um, if you go to Holtefer's um, website, which is essentially where the DBK boys bought theirs, this is indeed about 10 euros, which isn't an exact comparison to USD or US dollars. Um, this is a little bit more expensive in the in you in America or in the US. Um, this guy I actually could not buy from Holtefers because Holtefers does not ship. Like Holtefers, like their actual website does not ship to the US at all. They'll ship to the European Union, anywhere in the EU, but they do not ship to the US. So your chances of getting this knife for $10 or somewhere around there is actually, um, if you live in the US, a 0% chance because they will not ship it here. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate. Now, luckily for me, in the last few weeks, these did actually become available on um, Amazon. And I looked like right when the video dropped, these were not available on Amazon. Um, these have since then become available on Amazon. So I did go ahead and purchase one for $17. So once again, not $10, it's uh, $17 for people in the US. It might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less. But realistically speaking, that's why I brought the more robust out is because the more robust and the Holtfer's heavy duty knife are about the same um, price point. Now, I will say what you are getting in difference is that you are getting an overall larger knife. And obviously you guys can see here that the handles are pretty pretty noticeably different. The Holtfer's has a much larger handle, very oversized, which in my opinion, I actually don't really love because I do tend to have like truly medium sized hands. So for me, the um, Robust actually tends to just be a little bit more comfortable. Now, as far as ergos go, they are about the same like they legitimately have just about the same ergos, but the Holtefers is just bigger. Now, I will say to the credit of the Holtefers, it does have a slightly, slightly larger um, blade. You guys can see there. Once again, it is the same thickness as the Robust, but I will say I think the Robust is a little bit better, at least right now. We'll go into this in a little bit more detail, but I do like the rubberizing of the Robust's handle. Once again, as I've talked about in many videos, rubberized handles just tend to work better than just a sheer plastic because this plastic is grippy, you know, when your hands are dry, when your hands are warm, but if it gets wet, if it gets bloody, if it gets cold, um, these handles do develop a pretty slick, 
um, kind of feeling to them and so you can lose traction pretty easily. Now, that's not the only thing I really dislike about the Holtifers. Something that I think that the DBK boys failed to mention when it comes to the Holtifers is actually the biggest reason why I don't think you should purchase one of these. And once again, I don't think you should purchase it, not because it's not affordable, it's super cheap. So if you want one, like, I guess go ahead and buy one. But the Robust is literally just about the same price and you are getting a slightly smaller knife, it is true, especially handle-wise. But um, if you can overlook the smaller handle size, the blade is the biggest differentiator between these two. Now, these are both, to my knowledge, made out of C100 or 1095 high carbon, which is a good steel. But the problem in lies with this Holtifers. And what I began to notice the moment I pulled this out of the box was that this guy has a very prominent micro bevel. You guys can see there pretty obviously, this has a very serious micro bevel. Now, what does that mean when it comes to a Scandinavian ground? knife it means that you don't have a zero degree bevel so the actual biggest pros to a um, Scandinavian ground knife is that it's a very bitey it's a very it's, it's an edge that wants to dig into wood and that is one of the greatest pros to having a <clears throat> Scandinavian ground knife now some people might be like Matt why do we care about that small you know uh, micro bevel well the problem with it once again comes back to the fact that if it's a true Scandi, it needs to be a zero ground. And if it's not a true Scandi and has this micro bevel, it essentially becomes a flat grind. And the problem with the flat grind with this short of a bevel is that it really has a hard time digging into wood. And this knife, while I, it is sharp, does not feel very sharp. It really does not dig into materials as well as a true zero ground um, Scandinavian grind, especially when we're dealing with a thicker um, you know, spine here. You, like I said, you're basically getting a very short flat grind because this is for all intents and purposes, when you have a prominent um, micro bevel on a Scandi grind, you've essentially just turned it into a flat grind. And flat grinds aren't bad, but if you're gonna have a flat grind, it really needs to be higher up and give that blade stock more time to taper down so that you have very little steel right behind the very cutting edge. So that's why this blade, like I said, it is sharp, but it feels very dull because you have so much steel behind the, be behind the bevel, behind that very cutting edge. Edge. Now, the other thing that I really dislike about these Holtifers is right up here at the tip. You guys can see that I don't know what, it must be something to do with the machining of these knives and their grinding process, but you notice how the um, grind for their Scandinavian grind is very even up until the very end of the tip. At the tip and throughout the belly, it becomes very uneven. And at the very tip, you can see how this is massively thick. This tip right here is not sharp. Like I can really do, like this is not, this would have to be reground. Like I would have to um, remove more material because the physical material thickness here at the tip is very, it's very high. Like you guys can hopefully see the glint on the very cutting edge, which means that there's still a lot of material on the cutting edge and like I said like it is at the tip butter knife sharp unfortunately and that just really goes back to the fact that especially when you look at it from this angle you can see that that is the tip and it is very very thick it's very obtuse now when we compare that to the Mora you guys can see here the Mora has a very evenly ground um, tip you can see how the grind is still pulled back very evenly throughout the whole of the grind and then like I said coming down to that tip you guys can see there that it's not super thin it is definitely well, like most Scandi grinds it's a little bit thicker at the tip but you can see that this is actually sharp like very sharp I would cut myself if I tried to do something like that whereas on this knife I can literally do this and it's it's not doing anything Thing. So that is the biggest thing for me. And I think the other issue that lies with this is Holtifers knows that they have a lot of material here. So they essentially doubled the bevel thickness. So you guys can see that little like extra glint of light there. That's the micro bevel, but you can see how much larger that bevel becomes when it goes to this very cutting tip. So you guys can see there, like that's how much bevel you have there. That's how much bevel you have there. It nearly doubles in thickness, um, that micro bevel. So they know this, they try to compensate for the extra thick tip by beveling it very deeply. And once again, this really becomes a very big problem because you're essentially dealing with a poorly ground flat grind at the tip here. Once again, there's a lot of material thickness here and 
maybe their argument is that this is a heavy duty knife so it's supposed to you know be strong be robust be you know able to take a lot of abuse and as we saw in the dbk boys video you know if this is a very durable knife you can baton it through a lot of like metal and it still won't do that much uh, damage to the blade and that's partly because you have a bevel here with a very thick um you have like a very short bevel with a very thick amount of steel behind that bevel. So you have this kind of like tanky like um, thickness to your steel, but you're also sacrificing in what makes this knife, well, a good knife because uh, yeah. So it's a bit of a problem because there's way too much um, steel stock on here. It really needs to be trimmed down and it really needs to follow a true like actual zero ground Scandinavian grind. Now it's not you know a mirror polished as you can see like my Mora is. I don't really care about that. The Hultfers is you know seemingly good quality. Um, it just really they got to fix this edge. This edge is just way too obtuse and it's not very sharp at all. Now like I said some people might say you know it, it's a $17 knife. It's a $10 knife you know why are you complaining and that's because literally this is a $17 knife and it's just built out of box this Mora outside of you know if you want to you know flattening the spine so it can strike ferro rods outside of that there's nothing that you need to do to this Mora to make it good its sheath is good the edge is good the grind is consistent everything is good on this Mora robust whereas with this Holtifers for the same price um, you have to once again redo the spine the spine is um, left rough which I don't mind at all, you know, like that's okay, I can do that, but I also have to redo the whole edge. If I want this to actually be a good performing knife, I would have to redo this edge entirely. Now, I'm gonna do some more tests on the Holta first heavy duty knife, and I'm gonna leave it in its stock edge configuration, because I want to test it in this stock configuration, but just pulling it out of the box, like observing what I've observed, and with the short amount of tests I've done already, like the preliminary tests, um, I definitely can say that for $17, unless you really need the extra handle length and you don't mind going through the process of touching up this edge and making it good i would probably avoid this knife because it just needs a lot of work and once again it's a super cheap knife i think that that's okay but there are better competitive offerings literally hailing <clears throat> from the same exact place you know um, like both of these are coming from Scandinavia they're both essentially the same knife like the so same thickness same steel a lot of similar attributes but the Mora outside of the spine needing to be you know flattened is ready to go out of the box and the Holta furs is unfortunately not um, yeah, so that's basically all I have to say about the whole first heavy duty knife. This is it in its packaging, or not packaging so much, but its sheath. Like I said, the sheath is okay. One last kind of final bit to it that I would say could use some improvement is uh, the sheath, and that is that um, similar to the Mora, this does have a removable sheath. It's kind of hard. You have to press in these two things, and then, or tabs, and then this comes up. It's very thin plastic, so I probably would recommend not doing this a whole lot because this plastic will get bent and probably break here over time and once again it's a cheap knife it's a cheap sheath I don't necessarily care too much but when you look at it like it's just really hard to argue because you look at this Mora and you're like this sheath right here versus this sheath like the Mora sheath is good to go out of box no questions asked right the whole first obviously it has to be different because they can't just copy Mora's homework but it definitely needs some refinement. So um, I really love Mora's KISS principle, like the keep it stupidly simple um, kind of principle behind this because nothing here is particularly difficult or you know over-engineered. It just absolutely works beautifully and it's super cheap and super easy to mass produce. And that's Mora, right? Um, and once again, I'm, I should be, it should be noted, I do talk a lot about Mora. Um, I'm certainly not sponsored by them. They have in the past sent me knives, but you know, I'm not really in any obligation to talk favorably about them. Um, there's never been any obligation like, oh, you have to talk good things about them. It's just, once again, these are quite immutable facts. Like, I'm not saying that this knife is good because I was paid to, but as you could clearly see in this video, in this comparison, like, the more it is just simply the better option. Like, I don't have to, like, lie or you know like make things up like just simply putting these two knives to like side by side you can see that the heavy duty from Holtifers is lacking anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out